Have you ever wondered how long you're actually radioactive after a PET scan? The answer, unfortunately, isn't so straightforward. Let me break it down. When you undergo a PET scan, a very small amount of radioactive material, known as a contrast agent or radio tracer, is injected into your body. These radio tracers emit positrons, which allow the scanner to produce detailed images of how tissues and organs are functioning in real time. Here are some of the most commonly used PET contrast agents, along with what they're used for, and most importantly, their physical half-lives. What is a half-life? Half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the radioactive atoms in a substance to decay into a more stable form. In our use case, it refers to how long it takes for the activity of a radio tracer, used during a PET scan, to decrease by 50% due to radioactive decay. If you want to calculate how long a patient is radioactive after a PET contrast injection, you can use this formula, where T sub P equals physical half-life, T sub B equals biological half-life, and T sub E equals the effective half-life. This formula allows for a more precise estimate of how long patients emit detectable radiation following a PET scan. However, a simpler and widely accepted way to estimate radiation decay is by using the six half-life rule. After six half-lives, more than 98% of the radioactivity has decayed, and the patient is generally considered to be no longer radioactive. Now I know what you might be thinking. Wouldn't it be more accurate to use the formula one over T sub E equals one over T sub P plus one over T sub B to calculate this? The truth is, it depends. The main challenge lies with the biological half-life, T sub B. This value varies on how different tissues absorb and eliminate the radio tracer. In certain cases, such as when FDG becomes metabolically trapped in the brain, tumors, or inflamed tissues, the body doesn't actively clear it. That makes the biological half-life extremely long, or effectively infinite. In those situations, T sub E is roughly equal to T sub P because the biological clearance is negligible. For instance, if we assume a T sub B of 120 minutes, the calculated effective half-life comes out to around 57 minutes meaning the radiation would fall to negligible levels in just under six hours. But in clinical practice, especially when dealing with trapped tracers, it's considered safer and more conservative to assume T sub E is roughly equal to T sub P and to apply the six half-life rule based on that. After a PET scan, most patients are allowed to return home right away. However, it's generally recommended to avoid close physical contact, especially with infants, small children or pregnant individuals until the radiation has diminished. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more insights into medical imaging.